All right, so uh, moving on from the single string thing, connecting the strings, we could, of course, sit here all day and come up with different ways of playing scales. The first, uh, when I first started teaching scales, I taught more of the Berkeley method of, of positions of scales. And then I realized a lot of people have a difficult time stretching their fingers out be, you know, beyond four frets. Right. So I got into this thing called the caged positions. C-A-G-E-D, where yeah. each letter represents a different familiar chord in the first position. Yes. Right? So the C chord, G right. chord, E chord. Yes. Right. A chord. And D chord. And D. Right. Okay, so if we break down the uh, groups of notes, uh, that we play across the open positions in the key of C, we come up with the scale groups that we can use up and down the whole fretboard. And um, if you take groups of threes, there's three groups of groups of threes that have two whole steps, C, D, E, F, G, A, and G, A, B. We can el eliminate two of those, but we need G and A to connect the other patterns because on either side of G and A is a whole step. Right. All right. So if you if you play, most people know this pattern. If you just play across the open position in natural notes or a C scale, you get the five patterns. Right. E F G, A B C, D E F G A, B C D, E F G. So there's two EFG, right. so there's only five patterns. Yeah, and notice this one pattern is only two notes, G, A. Right. All right, so if we then group uh, two strings at a time, say we play E, F, G, A, B, C, and play that up. There you go. Yeah. Right. Now... I was playing B flat. I you was in did, F for a second. Yes, yeah, you did. You did do that, but you corrected yourself. Okay, now uh, we could keep going up the string six and five, but let's try this. Let's play that same note group between strings five and four. E F G A B C. Um, you're on D E F. Oh yeah. E F G A B C. That's it. So, yeah. If you start from the fourth string, you've got the exact same pattern. FG. Yeah. Okay, now here's the exception set of strings. If we start from the third string, everything's got, well, not everything, but when we cross the second string, you've got to shift up one fret. Yes. E, F, G, shift up one fret, A, B, right. C. Because of the tuning difference between the G string and the B string. Because we can't make this easy enough. You know, we have to make it a little hard. <laughs> well, <laughs> that whole tuning uh, difference or that, you know, discrepancy in, in how the strings are tuned uh, from one to the next explains a lot of the patterns on the guitar. It, it sort of right. unlocks the mystery of a lot of patterns on the guitar. Right. You know, everything is, is the same it, it, until you cross that second string and now it's going to, you have to compensate by one fret. Right, right. If you then uh, play the same pattern between strings two and one, E, F, G, A, B, C, it goes back to the fingering pattern that it was before because these two strings are, off, are, are also tuned in fourth. So E to A is a fourth, A to D is a fourth, D to G is a fourth, B to E is a fourth, but G to B is only a major third, which is one half step lower than a perfect fourth. Right. That's why you're having to compensate by one fret. Okay, so we've got these five patterns. Say we do the next one. G, A, B, C, D, which are the first five notes of a major oh, scale. Yeah. Why don't you start with your second finger on the G? There you go. Okay, so because the, the relationship of G to B is this. Right. So between most sets of strings, we're going to start with the second finger. Yeah. All right. Okay, and then play it off the fifth string, G. Uh -huh. Tenth fret. Uh, fifth, oh, yeah, fifth finger. finger. Second finger? Yeah, I know. Demonstrating the the whole purpose of doing this. No. no. G A on one string. Oh yeah, right. G A on one string. A, A B C D on one. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, now on the starting from the fourth string G. Um G second finger on that G. Exactly. 
exact same fingering pattern as right. before. Okay, now from the open third string, we have G, A, yeah. B, C, D, or starting from the 12th fret, G, G, A. Yeah. Now you can start with your first finger, yeah, because the relationship of G to B has changed. <laughs> okay. Oh, my phone going out. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, starting from the second string G at the um, eighth fret with your second finger. Yeah, it goes back to the pattern it was and so forth. Right. Okay, so you've got these five patterns. Steve's going to uh, scan. I'm going to scan all this stuff and throw it up on a Mediafire link. So you can just download this stuff in PDF form. Yeah. Print out your okay. copy and. and and work on it. Okay, so let's let's try this. Let's just go up strings six and five because this is relatively easy and play the five patterns. Okay. On, on adjacent two strings. So right. E F G A B C. Yeah, up and down like a scale. Oh, okay. Yeah, a couple times. One more. Good. Okay, start with your second finger right. on G. First finger on the A, A B C D E F. Right. Don't 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 uh, stretch. No no no. You no. start with your first finger. No no. No. A B C. Yeah. No no stretching. Oh right. Right. A B C D E F. Yeah. A right. B C D E F. Yeah. Okay. Now start from B B C D E F G. That's it. Good. Now, instead of starting from C, we're starting from D with the first finger. First finger. Okay. D, E, F, G, A. Only five notes. Yeah. Okay, so my first little diagram here is on two adjacent strings. The next diagram will be three adjacent strings. Okay. If you chain two sets of three adjacent strings, you get all six strings. Right. Okay, so, for example, if I start here on this G, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, I can start from B, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, E, F, G, A, B, C. So we're chaining this pattern yeah, with this one. Ah. Uh, yeah, okay, now start from E, E, F, G. Um, In the same position. Same position. Uh, e, F, G. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now start from A on the third string. Now this is a funny one. A B C. Shift one fret D E F. Yeah. And back. And then start from the D on the second string. D E F G A. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Or or I could do it this way. Here's three strings. Here's three strings. And now I all six strings. Okay, we can go through all five positions like that, but right. let's not. Okay? <laughs> all right. Now, within these same positions, these exact same positions, we've got all kinds of stuff. Um, I, I wanted to talk about uh, some pentatonic scales today because everyone loves those. But within these same positions here, here is a C arpeggio. See the position right. you just played. Yeah. Just a triadic arpeggio. And well, you, shall we get into these? Yeah, we we, we could. I'm well, worried we're getting a little late on time, but the, you know we could. No, well, why don't we pass on these? I, I just all wanted right. to demonstrate that in any of these positions, there's all these arpeggios. Just my camera only has a maximum time it will record, okay. and then it will it'll work okay. out on us. All right, I'll I'll go straight to the pentatonics. Okay. okay. So in this position all that right. we just played, here's a C major pentatonic. If you eliminate the, 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 C, the C major pentatonic is the C major scale without F's 
and Bs. Right. No four and no seven. Because the seven, the four is too close to the three, and the seven is too close to the one. So it pulls a little bit. If you want to get rid of that tension. Yeah, and here's another thing that uh, I've discovered recently, which I never even thought about, was that this pentatonic scale, the, the, one of the reasons why it's so singable and so universal is that if you start from C and build in intervals of fifths, just like the overtone series of a, a of a note, the first harmonic is the octave, and then you'd have a fifth above that. Right. So the relationship of one to five is incredibly strong. Right, the dominant. Right? Yeah, but well, dominant. I'm I'm just talking about the note itself. Just right. these, these two notes that they they almost. It actually has to do with the math, right? Yes, because yes. It, it breaks it into a certain grouping, right. and the closer you get vibration-wise mm -hmm. to certain notes, the more class you get, and sort of in the middle where you break it up in a nice even division. Yes, the more pleasing it is. Yes, the more or the closer it sounds to our ear, it's harder for us to distinguish. Mm -hmm. In other words, when you go up and if you have an A four forty, and you go up here, that's an A eight eighty, and if you go down and half, it's an A two twenty. There's some, some real math behind it. Yes, right. So anyhow, if you start on C and you right. go up a fifth, it's G, and if you go up another fifth. It's D. Right. And another fifth, it's A. And another fifth, it's E. And O. Oh, those are the notes of C major pentatonic. Right. I think Larry, I saw Larry Carlton talk about that mm -hmm. one time. He kept going up fifths. Yeah. Until he built the scale. Right. So there's the five notes of the pentatonic. Right. Now, when we finger this, these we're, this pattern that we're playing, and we could certainly play five boxes of these patterns, they're strictly two notes per string. Here's the one that everyone knows and loves. It's the thing. same as the... Yeah, it's an A minor pentatonic or a C major but if pentatonic. But if you're playing it over a C chord... Yeah. And you're starting... Right. So it fits into that chord or A minor. Right, so... I'm sorry. Now another pattern that we could also talk about as a way of breaking up uh, the pentatonic is a pattern of threes and twos. So everyone knows this, but m maybe you didn't think of it like this. Here's a pattern of three notes. I'm going to shift. I'm not even going to stretch out. No? Play C, D, E on one right. string. Good. Now on the next string, play G, A. Um, so, G, A. Yeah, so. try... Yeah, try fingering it like this. One, three, one, C, D, and slide up to E. But with your third finger. With the third. Okay, now in that same position, play G, A. Now in the next string, play C, D, slide up to E. Uh, so it's, it's three notes, and then two notes. And then three notes. Uh, so yeah, here? But Use only fingers one and three. This is it's it's just so easy. I mean, and a million rock patterns come out of this. I think I remember this. I think I remember you showing me these patterns. We did minor, like arpeggios, not pentatonic, but arpeggios. Yeah. So, oh, you know, like comes out of that same three plus two pattern. Right. It it, it does. Uh, I'll show this pattern again. This is C D E. And I'm using fingers one, three, shifting here, one and three, G A, C D E, G A, C D E. So it's the, it's the same two string pattern up and down the whole neck. That's another way of playing pentatonics. Right. Grouping them in sets and then just really repeating the set an octave up and then an octave up yeah. and then an octave yeah. up. Yeah. And then you've got to also be mindful of this shift uh, when the, you get to the right. second string. The G to B. Right. Because we, we can't make it hard enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's the way the guitar is tuned. Yeah, but then you get you get this nice Right. Uh, e. If you didn't have the guitar tuned that way, you would You would be able to play the lemon song. That's right, and we have to be able to play that. <laughs> Come on. Uh, or, or we you know, to play a, a, a major bar chord we, Right, you get that you'd have to figure it like this. Right. You know. Right. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's just crazy. It's nuts.
What sort of sorcery is this? <laughs> it's cuckoo. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, most people know how to use the, the major or minor pentatonic, the major being um, uh, C major pentatonic. The notes relate to C as one, two, three, five, six. Right. Octave and the same five notes uh, as they relate to A minor are one flat three four five flat seven octave. Right. Okay. So um, I spent a long time working on different types of pentatonics, and some of them are very very simple. That was my watch. Okay. Beeping. Okay. Just making sure it's not the camera yeah. wigging out on this. Okay. Hair. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, a very simple one and incredibly useful is if we take this C major pentatonic and change all the A's to B flat. Oh yeah, that sounds cool. See, I can alter it. Yeah, but it's. It, uh, I think of it. I I would call it a C nine pentatonic. Okay. These notes relate to C as one, two. Same as nine, three, five, flat seven octave. So, See? and you can do that with all your this the same five boxes of the pentatonic. This one. Yeah, some of these, this one in particular, involves a, a bunch of shifting. And then this is the same as the open position. Okay, so those notes relate to C as sure. one. So say we play uh, on a blues. Okay, okay. So, I don't know. Okay. Sure. Sure. I took liberties with that, not not too many. I was trying to restrict <laughs> myself, but one one very common my furnace. Uh, okay, <laughs> I was wondering what that gurgling was. One common thing that you can do that's also pretty simple is change the two to a sharp two. Now down right. here, this is a little awkward, but here it's it's not awkward. So what was this? Now this, and it gives it a little bit more bluesy tone. Yeah, it's the sharp nine. Right. I'm, I'm throwing the four in there too, but which is um, yeah, it's the sharp nine, right? Yeah. So yeah. now you've got not, not only could you play the the basic major pentatonic, which we could play on a blues and get away with, especially if we bend some notes. So now we've got this regular ninth pentatonic and a sharp ninth pentatonic. Right. So you can get a lot of mileage out of those those scales. Sure. No, it sounds awesome. Yeah, why don't we set up a, a like a, um, a longer, let's do it like this.
all my rock riffs. I just play any of them. Uh, fun. <laughs> and I enjoyed it. I did too. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what I'll do is I'm going to scan these. If I hadn't mentioned it already a couple of times, I'm going to scan these uh, things that these sheets that uh, Pete brought over, and I'm going to put them up on uh, Mediafire. And you should be able to go right down below in a link and uh, download these. So, um, as always, thanks for stopping by. Thank you for stopping by. Pleasure, Steve. And uh, we'll have to have uh, Peter back at uh, some point and, uh, you know, uh, lay a, a few more concepts on you. But I think you got a lot on your plate for right now. I know that uh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks again, Peter. All right. And as always, rock on, guys. See ya.